the universe never ceases to amaze mankind with amazing, unbelievable facts about its nature. It is literally overflowing with mysterious objects and fascinating phenomena. Imagine a star, against which the sun would look like a tiny sparkling spot in infinite space. A star so large that it could swallow up most of the solar system. A celestial object of such size that its magnitude would make us question the reasonableness of this star's existence. For years it has avoided the prying eyes of many observers. And only recently has it revealed some of its secrets. You are on Space Stop, and today I will tell you about the biggest star in the universe. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, because every video is a lot of work. And I dare not hesitate for a second, enjoy watching. Not so long ago, the biggest star known to mankind was considered to be UY Scuddy. Located at a distance of nine and a half thousand light years from the sun, this star is so staggeringly huge that if it were at the center of the solar system, its size would exceed the orbit of Jupiter. Its radius can reach 2,000 solar radii, and its volume is more than 5 billion times that of the Sun. Recently, however, a new giant claimed to be the largest star in the known universe, Stevenson 2 to 18. It is known as Stevenson 2 to 18. The star is about 20,000 light years from the Sun. Stevenson 2 to 18 is in the constellation Scuddy and continues to bear its original name. The star itself was listed in the All-Sky database at the end of the last century, but giant clouds of space dust greatly hindered observations of star clusters in the constellation Scuddy. It wasn't until the year 2020 that scientists were able to obtain DART on its size, and this information turned out to be striking. According to some estimates, the radius of Stevenson 2 to 18 may be one and a half billion kilometers, which is 10 times the distance from Earth to the Sun, or 2,150 times the radius of the Sun. This means that the volume of the supergiant must be about 10 billion times the volume of the Sun. Placed at the center of the solar system, Stevenson 2 to 18 would easily swallow Saturn along with all of its rings and moons, not to mention the Earth. Interestingly, it takes nearly eight hours for light to pass the equator of this giant star. It takes the same amount of time for sunlight to reach Pluto at the farthest point in its orbit. The luminosity of the supergiant is estimated at 440,000 times that of the Sun, despite the fact that its surface temperature is relatively low, about 4,000 degrees. This is about half as much as the Sun and corresponds to the red band of the light spectrum. It is for this reason that Stevenson 2 to 18 falls into the category of red supergiants. In addition, this relatively low temperature suggests that most of the star's radiation is in the visible and thermal spectra, and the amount of deadly ultraviolet and X-ray radiation is very small in comparison. It may seem strange that, despite its impressive size and sufficient luminosity, Stevenson 2 to 18 cannot be seen from Earth with the naked eye, but this is due to the low temperature of its surface and the clouds of stellar dust and gas that envelop the giant star and hide it from observers on Earth. They absorb and scatter the star's light, making it difficult to study the object. The mass of Stevenson 2 to 18 has yet to be determined, however, Assuming that its internal composition is similar to that of UY Scuddy and other supergiants, it must be in the range of 20 solar masses. If this is true, then the average density of such supergiants must be extremely low, almost equal to the density of the Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of about 90 kilometers above sea level. Indeed, it is surprising that the thermonuclear energy that gives light to a star is preserved under such conditions. The size of supergiants is so mind-boggling that these objects can hardly be called stable. The fusion reactions of helium, carbon, oxygen, and lithium become the main energy source of the star. The lifetime of such stars is relatively short, only a few million years. In the process of evolution, the promising supergiant rapidly grows in size and loses mass to the strong solar wind. 
The clouds of stellar dust and gas surrounding the original star are quickly absorbed by the new star, which continues to swell at an astounding rate, exceeding its original size. However, its own solar wind creates a new nebula around the star. Because of the short lifespan of such a star, no planet can originate in this nebula. Eventually, the supergiant explodes. After a supernova explosion or even a hypernova explosion, the outer layers of the star are discarded and gradually cool down, forming a nebula. As for the former core, it turns into either a neutron star or a black hole, depending on its mass. A hypernova star is accompanied by high-energy X-rays, powerful enough to destroy any life within a radius of several light years. Fortunately for us and Earth, all the supergiants that scientists have identified so far are far beyond this radius, so we are not in danger. Because of the active emission of charged particles, the rotation of this type of star gradually slows down. Eventually, their outer layers almost stop. The core of the star, meanwhile, continues to rotate without stopping. Given the high luminosity, low temperature and impressive size, we can assume that the habitable zone of Stevenson 2 to 18 must be really huge. Its midpoint must be 20 times the distance from the center of the Sun to the orbit of Pluto. As for the area of the habitable zone, it must be a billion times larger than that of the Sun. Scientists admit the possibility of planetary systems around supergiants, but given the short life of these stars and unstable conditions, the chances of this are almost negligible. In any case, no confirmed exoplanets have yet been discovered in the vicinity of 1. Stevenson 2 to 18 is so far away that its light will reach our Earth in 20,000 years. For all we know, at this very moment its core may be contracting to form an extremely dense neutron star, and the red-hot fragments of its outer layers are flying off in all directions to become part of the icy cosmos. But humanity will only be able to find this out in the very distant future. I hope you found this video interesting, and if so, please like it and subscribe to the channel. See you in the new video.